today I'm in Hamilton Town Center and you can see a little bit of what's behind me here. Ford's Garage, there's livery, really nice restaurants here and it's a huge outdoor mall for lack of a better phrase and it's right here next to I-69 and just about everything that you could ever imagine is right here at Hamilton Town Center but this isn't the topic of the video today. More than probably many other towns that surround Indianapolis, Pendleton has come up an incredible amount in the last couple of years. What's Pendleton like? Where's Pendleton? What have you heard about Pendleton? What should I hear about Pendleton? So we're gonna explore that in this video today. And amazingly, it's a very short drive from right here. In fact, the first exit to get off I-69 going to Pendleton is only seven minutes from here by GPS when you punch it in, that very first exit. So I think even to people that live around the Indy Metro, Pendleton is closer than what you might imagine. And it's certainly been drawn closer by the expansion of Noblesville and Fishers. So I'm in Noblesville right now by address, but just across I-69, I can see Fishers. So we're gonna jump in the car, go up to Pendleton, check out what it's like and what you might expect. So stay tuned. We're on our way. just made it off on State Road 13 and I'm at this Love's Travel Center here with it's huge I have to get some gas but this exit where I got off this is where it can get a little bit confusing but Pendleton does make its way all the way backward a little bit back to the west and we're gonna have to go a little bit south of here on State Road 13 and then go back that direction out to the west and just give you an example of what Pendleton's like right there in that far western border of it and what you might expect. Here I am at that spot just a little bit west of State Road 13 which is just off to the east over here. I'm looking up at 136th Street and as you go to the west right up here behind me that's all fishers. All of these homes right here behind me all have fishers addresses but then if you go just to the east of Atlantic Road and right here in this little subdivision, Oakmont, this is Pendleton. So all of these homes, even though they're right across the street from Fisher's homes, these are all gonna be a little less expensive because of that Pendleton address. This right around that exit at State Road 13, this is where Pendleton's really growing the most. And it's all kind of filling in between Noblesville, Fishers, and Pendleton in this area. The question you wanna ask yourself is if you get into a home in Pendleton, do you feel like you live in Pendleton or do you feel like you live in Noblesville or do you feel like you live in Fishers? You could get caught kind of in a spot here where you sort of feel in between. And my guess is that the people that live in this part of Pendleton probably use that part of Fishers and Noblesville more than they actually use of Pendleton proper. So we're gonna go up to the old part of Pendleton now so you can really see what Pendleton, at least the, the central part of it, really looks like. Because if you live here in these subdivisions in this particular area, you're gonna be going to Pendleton schools, you're gonna be involved with all of that, and you're probably gonna to wanna to know what Pendleton is really truly like. <laughs> getting out of the vehicle here just got off State Street and right on the edge of downtown Pendleton and as you go through Pendleton on State Street you can get a sense as to why it's called historic Pendleton and why it's on the National Register of Historic Places and the buildings that actually are and if you walk through here you're gonna find obviously some really unique shops a few really nice restaurants all up and down. It's not very big, but it's significant enough to where it's a destination. We've actually gone here before, and I'll take you up here to that corner in just a second. 
for dinner uh, on purpose. We live in Greenfield and it's not a terrible drive up to Pendleton. It's less than 30 minutes for us, about 20, 25 minutes or so to get there. So that Falls Park, which Fall Creek runs through, is just off to the north of where I am right now. You can actually walk up to it. But if you were to live in this type of Pendleton, Pendleton really has two sides to it, I guess. So the side that we were in over in the State Road 13 area, that's where most of the expansion of Pendleton is happening. And it's not like Pendleton is very big. It's roughly 5,000 people. If you have a Pendleton address, you're gonna be in Pendleton schools, and eventually your kids would go to Pendleton Heights High School, which is over on the east side of town. We'll actually go down State Street and hit that. I mean, you could actually ride your bike and continue walking right up to the high school. Maybe 1,400 kids or so. So that could be an advantage or a disadvantage depending on how you look at it. If you were thinking, well, we wanna live kind of up where we started out towards Hamilton Town Center, that location really works, but we don't know if we want Pendleton or Fishers. Well, if you're in Fishers, obviously you're gonna be in Hamilton Southeastern Schools. If you have a Pendleton address, different. And being in a smaller school, some people are gonna like, if you get into any one of the Fishers High Schools, Fishers High School itself, or Hamilton Southeastern High School, they're both at least 3,300 kids. And some people like that, some people don't. That's completely up to you. But Pendleton Heights, much smaller at 1,400 kids or so. But that particular part of Pendleton, as I said, feels a little bit without an identity. It is Pendleton, and maybe you'll come here into Pendleton, but my bet is that you'll probably spend more of your time a little bit further west, unless you're, of course, coming in here to the schools uh, to use what you can get there in Noblesville and also in Fishers. But if you live in this part of Pendleton, of course, this is old Pendleton. You're gonna have an older home, but you can also have some new construction homes. There's a new construction neighborhood that I was just in not that long ago called Carrot Glen, just up to the north. It's one of the larger new construction neighborhoods in this particular Potter Pendleton and you can go a little bit further to the east and you get into a little bit more new construction there too but the demand for new construction in this part of Pendleton and out to the east it's not as big right there across the street Catello's is an amazing Italian restaurant and you would think of course it's not that hard to screw up Italian almost all Italians pretty good Olive Garden is pretty good it's hard to it's really hard to knock on Olive Garden. They do a good job, but Catello's, that place is, I wouldn't say a step up in Italian, it's probably two steps up. That is a really fine dining experience. That's a very nice restaurant, and we've traveled there to eat from where we live. So this part of Pendleton, those older homes, the mature feel, it is Pendleton, heart of Pendleton, and you're going to probably spend most of your time here, without a doubt. You get a little bit east of here towards the high school, you're probably spending more of your time there too and you like that feel. You like being small town. You like being tight. You don't like the bigger, more suburban types of cities like in Noblesville and Fishers. It's hard to describe a place like Pendleton other than being a classic small town. It's to use an Indiana reference, I mean, it's very, it's very John Mellencamp, John Cougar Mellencamp. It's very, very small town. And when you go through here, it doesn't matter really where you're from in the entire country. You're probably gonna get a sense of that. So this would be that other side of Pendleton compared to that other west side on that first exit. So I'm in Falls Park now. And if you live directly in Pendleton, really truly the heart of Pendleton, then Falls Park is probably gonna be a staple for you. There are a ton of kids on the playground just across the parking lot on the other side of where I'm sitting. Got the falls actually right here behind me. And there's plenty to do in here for everybody. As far as relaxing, there's some people sitting on the bench across the pond, just hanging out. A lot of families over there on the playground. Got people walking around the falls over on the other side. So not necessarily hiking or monstrous trails of any kind like that, but it's just a really nice city park. Really pretty. It's a cloudy day right now where I'm, <laughs> while I'm out here at this point, but 
This is a park that's visited an awful lot by people. And actually, when I used to bike a lot, a friend of mine and I would ride from Fishers out north of Noblesville, out east of Noblesville, and some of our longer rides, we would come through Pendleton and stop here at Falls Park because, of course, it's right next to downtown. We could stop at a gas station, go to the bathroom, or even go to the bathroom here at the park, get something to drink, refill our water bottles, get something else that we might need, and just hang out here for a good 10 minutes or so just for a quick break. I just walked out of the downtown area, State Street. It's right down this really, really tiny road um, just off to the north. It's actually Caroline. And as I got out, it started to rain amazingly. But the cool thing about uh, some of the neighborhoods right here in downtown Pendleton is that they are so mature and you do have some of these nice trees that it does give me a, a little bit of a, a roof, a little bit of an umbrella. But this part of Pendleton again, much older, but it's also very dense. You could walk almost anywhere here in, in Pendleton proper, and you could certainly bike almost anywhere. But as you go further to the east on State Street, and where you get to, let's say, the Needler's Grocery Store and a few other little shops where it kind of looks a little bit more modern and contemporary, that's where Pendleton doesn't end. You can go out further to the east, pretty good way, a couple miles or so, but it looks like it really just abruptly ends right there. Here we are in what feels like far eastern Pendleton, in probably the most commercial part of Pendleton as well. Most of Pendleton is not like this at all. But as you go a little further east here, like I said, it feels like Pendleton just abruptly ends. They've got the high school just across the street, the middle school just across the street. Just past that, it is open country, extremely, extremely rural looking and feeling, and in reality is very rural. So you can still have that Pendleton address as you get a little bit further that way though. So when you live in Pendleton, you really are likely to get into a couple different personalities. You've got the far west, which is much newer and more connected to Noblesville and Fishers. And then you've got the further east all the way up until this point and a little further out. And this to me is more true Pendleton, the heart of Pendleton. And if you live in this particular area, this is probably where you're gonna spend a lot of your time. You're gonna shop for groceries here at this Needler's. You're gonna to go to a lot of the shops and stores that are around here, uh, like the CVS across the street and the Wendy's right here, this parking lot. The Mexican restaurant right there. You might travel a little bit to Fortville or Noblesville or Fisher sometimes for different restaurants, but you're gonna spend a lot of your time right here. But if you go beyond this, again, it seems like Pendleton just abruptly ends a little bit like this video. So if you need help with Pendleton or any other city or town that surrounds Indianapolis, don't hesitate to reach out. We'll always have your back with those questions and we'll always have your back when it comes time for you to make your move to the Indy Metro or a place like Pendleton. We'll catch you in the next one.